Surface comb is an operator in Ornitrix which can be used to define the hair shape using a set of surface vectors that we call sinks. It can also be used to specify hair data instead of the hair shape and in this quick tutorial we're going to check out how this is done. So I have a very basic procedural stack here where I have hairs and on top of them I have a freeze operator that freezes the hair a little bit and then I have another operator length that uh, specifies the hair length. So I'm just going to look at the shelf here and on the shelf I'm going to click the edit things button and now if I click and drag on the surface of the base mesh I can uh, create some sinks that will specify the direction of the hair by adding a surface comb operator into my operator stack. First thing I will do is I'll take this operator and I'll drag it below the freeze operator so that we apply the surface comb changes before the procedural operators. And then I'm going to go to the right hand side into my attribute editor. And in the attribute editor, I'm going to uncheck the apply to direction checkbox and apply to shape checkbox. We don't want to alter the shape of the hair, we just want to set some strand data. So I'm going to check this apply to strand data checkbox instead. And then I'm going to scroll down and find this strand data group over here. Here we have some settings that specify how the strand data is being generated and what channel it is being applied to. By default, the target channel is set to none. If you had some existing channel that you wanted to edit, you can specify the channel here. But if the setting is none, it's going to create a new channel for us. And next to it, we have a name value for the new channel. So we'll just leave it at sync values, but you can have any other name here. And the default mode is sync size. And we will check out what sync distance does in the next video. So here, basically, we are saying that we're going to use the sync size, which is the length of the sync vector. And uh, we're going to apply values to our output channel, which is sync values, depending on the size of the sinks. So the shorter the sync, the more closer it's going to get to the minimum value. The longer the sync, the more closer it's going to get to the maximum value. The longest of the sinks is going to get the max value and the shortest of the sinks is going to get the mean value. So, for example, this sink over here, we're just going to make super short. It's going to have a value of zero. And uh, this sink over here is going to be quite long. It's going to get a value of one. And this sink over here is going to be somewhere in the middle. So it's probably going to be something like 0 0.5. So now I'm going to exit the edit sinks mode. And I'm going to select the freeze operator, which, as you know, is above the surface comb operator. So it gets all the data that was created inside the surface comb. And in the amount channel, I have this sync values channel that we created. If I select it, you can now see that we had the shortest sync over here and it's getting a value of zero. We have the longest sync over here, which is a value of one and a medium here. So if I go back to my surface comb and I re-enter the edit syncs mode, I can select the sinks and I can change the position of my sink. And as you see, I want to change the position. The amount of freeze changes depending on where I move my sink. Also, I can change the length of the sink. So this uh, one that's in the middle, I can make it longer to make it uh, match the value of one, or I can make it shorter to make it value of zero. And uh, also I can add more sinks. So if I click and drag somewhere, and, uh, and I change the size of the sink over here, you can see that it also alters the resulting freeze amount. So if I need more details somewhere, I can always add more sinks to specify the values localized to a specific part of your groom. Or if I don't need this anymore, I can just press delete button and get rid of this sink altogether. I can also stack multiple surface comb operators on top of each other. So if I go back to Ornitrix and add another surface comb operator, and I just go and uh, again, uncheck apply to direction and apply to shape, and I uh, use the apply to strand data option here. I'm going to change this value to maybe length data so that we don't end up creating two channels that have the same name. And I'm going to go back to my sync editor tool and create some new syncs. And in this case, these sinks will generate a new channel and all the data will go into that separate channel. So now I'm going to exit the sync editor mode, go to length operator. In this length operator in the value channel, I'm going to select this length data over here. And now uh, we have the surface comb over here, 
which controls the length of our hairs. If I go back to my sync editor, you can see that now I can alter the values and it's going to increase or decrease the hair length or I can move the sinks around to update the length in real time. So these options are quite useful if you don't want to uh, paint maps or paint strand channels directly and instead you want to have a very quick way of specifying local properties depending on the position in object space of uh, different operators inside Ornitrix with just a few mouse clicks and it also takes very little space to store in case you're exporting this group because all you have to do is export the sync vector.